You guys can come on in. Days before the official opening, we're stepping into the room that helped make history. Our tour guide is an unassuming software engineer from Toronto, Ben Feist. Well, honestly, it's, uh, it's really surreal to be here. I mean, you see, you see all this stuff. To understand how Feist found himself in mission control, we need to go back to his basement, where his obsession started. This is Apollo 11 in real time. Six. For years, Feist spent his time documenting moon missions on the websites he built. Then he discovered the mother load. I can see everything quite clearly. 11,000 hours of mission control voices from Apollo 11. But it was in rough shape. And it turns out that when you have old machines and old tapes, then you play them back. It's amazing that you're able to play them back at all. Capcom, we're go for landing. All the men of mission control, the flight controllers, the surgeons, even the astronauts, were mixed into a muddy mess with no consistent sense of time. Houston had a problem. If you want to try to figure out what somebody was talking about at a given time in the mission, you need to be able to jump to that time. Right. And so that was really the problem that, um, that I went out to try to solve. As he analyzed the audio, Feist discovered a tone that functioned as a timeline. And you can hear it's wavering. And wrote a program to match the voices to the tone, making the recordings consistent and clear. The fact that it worked uh, was just <laughs> This eureka moment, I couldn't believe. We're go, same type, we're go. It was the breakthrough NASA needed. These tapes may never have seen the, the light of day again. Mm -hmm. um, and having them come back to life, it's almost like having a window open into history. Hello? Hello. As Feist listened to the voices of a controller razzing someone for sleeping in. Afternoon. Yeah, man, you didn't miss lunch. Or breathing a sigh of relief after the moon landing. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. They're just normal people uh, doing a job. And they're young. They're, I think the average age was 26 years old in mission control. They're professional. Um, but they're also, you know, complaining about how much overtime they're working. But as Feist was working to restore the audio, another recovery effort was underway. For years, the original mission control had fallen into disrepair. Just in time for the anniversary, everything from the carpets to computer consoles were being restored to bring tourists back to 1969. Okay, and what better way to tell the story of mission control than with the audio itself? This is Houston, one minute. It's one of the reasons of when Feist visited NASA to present his website, they invited him on board. I believe that the, uh, the first thing that was said was, it's really complicated to explain who you are. It would be easier if you just worked here. Uh, <laughs> Altitude 5,200 feet. Okay, all flight controllers, gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Right up. Go. Right. go. Now tourists can watch and listen from the actual viewing lounge as the mission control audio brings Apollo 11's most dramatic moments back to life. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. And they, they were like, yeah, that's cool. What's with the map? And they all ran up to the map. Okay, so that was For the moon maps Feist's describing, he recruited another Canadian, multimedia producer Tyler Straw. People get emotional, and that's pretty wonderful for me to have given them that sort of experience. Okay, keep the chatter down. In this After all those years of listening to their voices, Feist is standing in the room responsible for this. That's one small step for man. One all this looks like it might be put here haphazardly, but it was all um, painstakingly put from photographs of what document was there, open on what page, uh, and it's really just very emo moving uh, and emotional experience, I think, to be here. Why, why, why do you say it's emotional? Uh, I think it's, uh, I don't know, in a lot of ways, Apollo, it helped us define what it is to be human. It was us at our very best doing something that was extremely difficult. And, you know, those people were, they might be personally flawed, but they were perfect in that moment. Today our calling to explore is even greater. With history preserved, NASA's looking forward. We're going. We are going. The new goal? Have the first woman on the moon by 2024. And Feist will be part of it, building systems to share it with the world. Yeah, if, if I have my way, the, the eight-year-old at home watching uh, the next moon mission will be using the same system that Mission Control uses to to manage that same mission with full openness of all the channels of data and, and uh, video and, and as a new way to capture the imagination of, uh, of kids. Part of the first few steps to NASA's next giant leap. Eli Glasner, CBC News, Houston.